गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग आई वेलकम यू ऑल अगेन टू दी विजय इंथ्यूज होप ऑल ऑफ यूर डूइंग ग्रेट हैविंग दी गुड टाइम एट होम वेल पीपल इफ एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल टू एवरी वन लेट मी नो इन द चार्ट बॉक्स विद द थम्स अप लेट मी नो इन द चार्ट बॉक्स विद द थम्स अप इफ एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल टू एवरी वन हाई अब्रनल हाई खुशी हाई नवनीत हाई क्रीटो हाई सहाना हाई रिदमा गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गाइज गुड इवनिंग वेलकम वेलकम टू द सेशन वेलकम If I'm audible and visible to everyone, hit the chat box with the thumbs up. Hi Nishant, how are you doing? How are you doing? Great guys, great. So people, as you all must be knowing, in the last session we talked about the basic terminologies related to the uh, ionic equilibrium. Yes, and we talked about some important things. I told you when to neglect alpha, when not to neglect alpha. All those things we covered in the last session. Yes, and people, in the today's discussion, we'll be talking about the important concept which is what we call as common ion effect oswald's dilution law and ionic product of water all these three things will be covered in the today's session yes hi jumana how are you doing hi travel expert i'm doing wonderful hi fida welcome welcome so people before starting the session let me introduce myself as you all must be knowing my name is wasim but i'm your chemistry master teacher right here okay so people let me show you the schedule of the week which i have been following throughout yes we are going to do the common ion effect oswald's dilution law and ionic product of water in the today's session yes and in the upcoming session we are going to do the calculation of strong ph of strong acids and bases and then we'll be talking about the calculation of ph of weak acids and weak bases and we'll be talking about the salt hydrolysis at the end yes i'm doing wonderful jwan i'm doing wonderful how are you doing So people this is the schedule of the week which I've been following which I'll be following throughout the week yes and talking about the menti sessions talking about the menti sessions on Tuesdays you have got the menti sessions with Shimon sir okay and in the upcoming Tuesday you have got the menti quiz from the chapter trigonometry okay Shimon sir will be taking that I am damn sure you'll be excited about that as well yeah okay and on sunday guys on sunday on the coming sunday at 9 pm i'll be taking the menti session from the chapter ionic equilibrium which is currently going on okay welcome ashwarya welcome welcome good evening good evening all right so people do not forget to like the video share and subscribe the channel at the same time so that everyone will get benefited out of these sessions yes yes aryan and i'll be taking titrations as well absolutely welcome basit welcome welcome all right guys so talking about the Vedantu JE Pro subscription. What all benefits you guys are going to get if you'll enroll yourself in this Pro subscription? If you'll get enrolled in this Pro subscription, you guys are going to get five thousand plus hours of live online teaching. Regular tests and assignments will be provided to you, which contains more than ten thousand questions. We have got twenty plus teachers with five plus years of experience who will be training you personally for the upcoming uh, JE twenty twenty one as well as JE twenty twenty two. Yes, and people, you have got the option to learn either in English or in Hindi. It's completely your wish to select the language. Get trained. by the master teachers of vedantu yes and people at the end let me tell you we are going to cover everything which includes your micro as well as crash courses okay good evening darshini good evening welcome welcome all right guys for the ones who are going to appear in je in 2021 we have come up with three different plans for you and on every plan right here we have got 20% off the first plan which is the one month plan after the 20% off you guys are just getting it for 6k three month plan 16.8k and six month plan 31.2k after the 20% off and all these plans are valid for the ones who are going to appear in je in 2021 yes for the ones who are going to appear in je in 2022 again we have come up with four different plans as you all can see yes welcome kashyap it's okay okay for the ones who are going to appear in je in 2022 we have come up with four different plans on every plan right here again we have got 20% off the one month plan after the 20% off you guys are just getting it for 4k three month plan 10.8k six month plan 19.2k and 12 month plan after the 20% off you guys are just getting it for 33.6k okay and for the droppers again we have three plans for you guys as you all can see on every plan right here we have got 20% off the one month plan after the 20% off you guys are just getting it for 7.2 Okay, three month plan twenty point four k and six month plan forty point eight k after the twenty percent off. Now, people, how to get these plans? There's a link in the description box of the video. I want you guys to click on that link. Use the coupon code as WBPRO. On using this coupon code of WBPRO, you guys are going to get the twenty percent off in whatever plan you are selecting for yourself. Yes, yes. Uh, Bhavani will be talking about that at the end. Okay. All right, guys. So let me know in the chat box if you guys are super duper excited for the session. 
Let me know in the chat box if you guys are super duper excited for the common iron effect. Let me know in the chat box fast. Let me know. Let me know with the thumbs ups. Till then I can have some water. Yes. Let me know in the chat box guys. Yes. Now Neeth has come up with the quote. If you want light to come into your life, you need to stand where it is shining. Oh, wonderful. That's great, bro. I need to note all these quotes down. Okay. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's great. All right, the Josh is high. People are super excited for this session, yeah? That's wonderful. <sighs> All right, guys, so let's get started then. Let's get started then. Let's get started then with something called as common iron effect. People, let me tell you this common iron effect, which I'm going to teach you right now. I'm going to use this common iron effect throughout the ionic equilibrium chapter. Okay, so make sure you get this concept properly. Make sure you get it properly. Make sure you solve all the problems based on these concepts. Okay, which I'll be teaching you in the today's session. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about something called as common iron effect. What is common iron effect all about? Let's get to know its definition first, then I'll make you understand what it actually means. Okay, let me tell you guys, common iron effect, it's defined as it is the suppression of, it is the suppression of degree of ionization of a weak electrolyte when a strong electrolyte, when a strong electrolyte containing a common iron is added to it. Okay. This is how we define the common iron effect. Now the point is, what can we conclude from this? What all things can we depict from this definition? Yeah, understand what this common iron effect will be all about. First of all, before talking about the common iron effect, I hope you have watched the uh, last lecture of the chemical equilibrium. That is the Lee Chatelier principle. Yes, people, this concept is based on Lee Chatelier principle. And as you all must be knowing, as per Lee Chatelier principle is concerned, whenever a system will be present at equilibrium, whatever we are going to do with the equilibrium, equilibrium is just going to do opposite of what we do to it. Yes. If I'll increase the concentration of reactants, equilibrium will try to decrease it. If I'll try to decrease the concentration of reactant, equilibrium will again try to increase it. If I'll try to concent if I'll try to increase the concentration of product, equilibrium will try to decrease the concentration of product and so on. So whatever I'll be doing with the reaction, which will be at equilibrium, equilibrium is exactly going to do opposite of what we are going to do with the reaction. Yes. So on that concept, this common ion effect is based. Yes. So let's go, let's get to know this common ion effect in detail, right? See guys, for example, for example, I'm taking one weak electrolyte right here. And examples of weak electrolytes I have given you the last session. If you talk about weak acids, if you talk about weak bases, all those weak acids, weak bases are the examples of what? Those are the examples of the weak electrolytes, yeah? And as I told you in the last session, weak electrolytes always remain in equilibrium with its ions, yes? Hi Anish, welcome. Hi Psychoaddict, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi Vaishnav, welcome to the session, bro. Okay, see guys. For example, I'm taking one weak electrolyte right here. Let's say I'm taking one weak acid. For example, I'm taking CH3COOH. This is one weak acid right here. That means this is the weak electrolyte because weak acids are the examples of the weak electrolytes. Yes. As you all must be knowing, your weak electrolytes, they stay in equilibrium with its ions and its ions are going to be CH3COO negative aqueous plus what? Plus H positive aqueous. Yes. Plus H positive aqueous. Right. Now, people, let's assume at time T is equal to zero. Let's assume at time T is equal to zero. The concentration of this weak electrolyte is C. So it's going to be zero. It's going to be zero as we all must be knowing now. Yes. Let's assume the degree of ionization of this weak electrolyte is alpha, correct? Now people, since in this reaction, equilibrium will get attained after some time, okay? And at equilibrium, as you all must be knowing now, the concentration of CH3COH will be C minus C alpha. The concentration of CH3CO negative is going to be C alpha. And the concentration of H positive is again going to be C alpha. So what I got right here, I got the concentration of each reactant and product right here at equilibrium. Yes, this is something which I got, okay? Now people, 
this reaction will be taking place in some container okay this reaction will be definitely taking place in some container in the same container if i'll drop if i'll drop a strong electrolyte if i drop a strong electrolyte for example i'm dropping hcl i'm dropping hcl hcl is considered as a strong electrolyte if i'm dropping a strong electrolyte this strong acid it will get completely dissociated into its ions its ions are h positive aqueous plus what plus cl negative aqueous yes in the same container in which I had this CH3COOH in equilibrium with its ions, I dropped a strong electrolyte and the condition for the strong electrolyte is something that this strong electrolyte and this weak electrolyte, they must have one ion in common. They must have one ion in common. Then only common ion effect is going to operate. Yes, then only common ion effect is going to operate. Okay. Now, people, what I have done right here, I have dropped a strong electrolyte containing a common ion in the same container, right? Let's assume at time t is equal to zero, the concentration of HCl right here is C1. It is going to be zero. It's going to be zero. Yes. Now, people, as you all must be knowing, strong electrolyte gets, com it gets completely dissociated into its ions. So I'll be left with nothing of HCl. Yes, whole HCl will get converted into its ions. So I would say the concentration of H positive, which will be coming from this strong electrolyte, it's going to be C1. And concentration of Cl negative coming from the same strong electrolyte, it's going to be again C1. Yes. Now, people, this reaction, this reaction was in equilibrium. Yes, it was in equilibrium before dropping this HCl in the same container. Now, people, when I dropped the strong electrolyte, which contains common ion, which contains common ion in the same container in which I had this weak electrolyte, can I say H positive concentration in the container will increase? H positive concentration, net H positive concentration in the container will increase? Absolutely. Okay. Initially, I had only, I had only this weak electrolyte in the container, okay, which was in equilibrium with its ions. Now, in the same container, I have dropped a strong electrolyte, which contains a common ion. Yes. When I how drop the strong electrolyte in the same container can i say h positive concentration in the container will increase and people since the reaction was in equilibrium if h positive concentration will increase i will say equilibrium will try to decrease the concentration of h positive yes as per lee chatelier principle okay if i increase the concentration of h positive in the container by dropping the strong electrolyte into it i will say concentration of h positive will increase but at the same time equilibrium is going to equilibrium will shift the reaction in such a way that the H positive concentration decreases so can I simply say the reaction is going to move backwards this reaction is going to move backwards this reaction is going to proceed in the backward direction yes definitely guys this reaction is going to proceed in the backward direction and when this reaction proceeds in the backward direction can I say number of ions can I say number of ions in the container will decrease because the reaction is proceeding in the backward direction direction because the ions are merging again and getting converted into CH3COH can I say in short degree of ionization of this weak electrolyte will decrease so people can I say degree of degree of ionization of this weak electrolyte got suppressed when I added a strong electrolyte which contains a common ion in between yes and this degree of this suppression of degree of ionization on adding on adding strong electrolyte in the weak electrolyte which contains the common ion which contains the common ion the suppression of degree of ionization is what we call as common ion effect let me know in the chat box if it is clear to everyone yes yes let me know in the chat box let me know in the chat box if it's clear to everyone. So people, what is happening right here? What is happening right here? It's very, very, very simple. I had a weak electrolyte. I added a strong electrolyte into it. Now both the weak electrolytes and the strong electrolytes, they have got the common ion in between. So what happened? The H positive concentration increased. The concentration of the common ion increased in the container and equilibrium will move in such a direction which decreases the H positive concentration. That means, that means the reaction is going to proceed backwards yeah and when the reaction proceeds in the backward direction can i say degree of ionization of this weak electrolyte will decrease and people this suppression of degree of ionization of the weak electrolyte in presence of a strong electrolyte containing common ion this suppression is what we call as the suppression of degree of ionization of the weak electrolyte in presence of a strong electrolyte containing common ion in between this suppression is what we call as common ion effect let me know in the chat box if it is clear to you. Yes. Let me know. Let me know. Walaikum Salaam Idris. How are you doing? Hi Wajid. 
Yes, Ranveer, absolutely. Why not? Yes. Yes, Kirito, it's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you're thinking is right. Yes. Now, guys, now, 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 let's talk about, let's talk about something really interesting about this common line effect, okay? Let's see how questions are to be solved, how questions are to be solved while considering this common iron effect, okay? Understand what I'm going to say now, okay? See, guys. For example, I'm taking the same weak electrolyte which I had, that is CH3COH. Understand how will I be approaching towards the questions which are based on this common iron effect, right? Understand. Let's say I've got the weak electrolyte over here, and this weak electrolyte will be in equilibrium with its ions, as you all must be knowing, and its ions will be CH3CO negative aqueous, plus what? Plus H positive aqueous. This is something which I'll be having right here in the container in which this reaction will be taking place. Yes. Now, guys, at time T is equal to zero. Let's say the concentration of this weak electrolyte is C. This is zero. This will be zero. Let's say the degree of ionization is alpha. So can I say at equilibrium, I'll be left with C minus C alpha concentration of CH3COH? Yes. And what is going to be the concentration of CH3CO negative? Can I say it's going to be simply C alpha? This is going to be C alpha. Yes. Very simple. Now, people, what I'm doing, I'm dropping the same, I'm dropping the strong electrolyte in the same container in which I have the CH3COH, yes? For example, I'm dropping HCl, which is the strong electrolyte in the same container in which we have got this CH3COH. So it will get completely converted into its ions. Its ions are H positive aqueous plus Cl negative aqueous, yes? Its ions are H positive aqueous plus Cl negative aqueous. Let's assume the concentration of HCl was C1 initially. This was zero. This was zero. Now, people, this HCl is a strong electrolyte. It will get completely dissociated into its ions. So I'll be having zero concentration left for this HCl. Okay. And this is going to be C1. This is going to be C1. Yes. Now, people, this C1, this is the concentration of H positive in the container, which is coming from HCl. Yes. And people, this C alpha, this is the concentration of H positive, which is coming from this weak electrolyte. Can you tell me what is going to be the resulting H positive concentration in the container? I will say the resulting H positive concentration in the container is going to be C1 plus C alpha. Yes. Can I say this is my resulting H positive concentration in the container? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely, yes. This is my resulting H positive concentration, guys. First of all, H positive concentration is coming from strong electrolyte as well as weak electrolyte. So the net H positive concentration is simply going to be C1 plus C alpha. Yes. Very, very, very simple. Now, people, understand one important thing right here. I'm going to erase this part. I'm going to erase this part. Okay. Now, see. This is a weak electrolyte. If I want to write the ionization constant for this weak electrolyte, can I do that? Absolutely, I can do that. Absolutely. I will be simply writing concentration of CH3CO negative, concentration of CH3CO negative, raised power stoichiometric coefficient, that is 1, multiplied by concentration of H positive, raised power stoichiometric coefficient, that is 1, divided by concentration of CH3COOH. Yes, this is something which I'll be writing right here. This will be equal. This will be equal understand. Concentration of CH3CO negative right here is C alpha. Yes. What is the concentration of H positive? It is simply C1 plus C alpha. This is the concentration of H positive at equilibrium divided by divided by concentration of CH3COH as you all must be knowing. It is C minus C alpha. If I take C common, it's going to be 1 minus alpha. Yes. Can I say 1C and 1C got cancelled? So I got the value of Ki ionization constant for this weak electrolyte as this is going to be C1 plus C1 plus C alpha multiplied by alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. This is going to be my expression for the ionization constant of this weak electrolyte after the common ion effect. Yes. Now, guys, understand one more thing. Understand one more thing. Okay. First of all, this was a weak electrolyte. So its alpha value was less than one. Now, after adding the strong electrolyte having common ion in between, can I say alpha value of this would have got further decreased? Alpha value after adding the strong electrolyte containing common ion. Alpha value for this weak electrolyte would have got further suppressed. Yes, due to common ion effect. So if I'm assuming this alpha value is far less than 1, I'm assuming alpha value to be less than 0.05, which I told in the last session as well. Yes? Yes? So first of all, this alpha value would have got further reduced, would have, would have got further suppressed on adding the strong electrolyte containing common ion in it. Yes? Yes? 
So people, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to say, let's assume alpha value is far, far, far less than one. Let's assume alpha value is less than 0.05. If alpha value is less than 0.05, can I do the neglection, which we discussed in the last session? Absolutely, I can do the neglection. Absolutely, I can neglect alpha wherever I want to neglect it. Yes. So people, can I simply say, if alpha value, if alpha value is far, far, far less than one, or let me write it like this, if alpha value is less than 0.05, what I'll be writing at that time, I can neglect alpha at that time. So people, instead of C1 plus C alpha, instead of C1 plus C alpha, I'm going to only write as C1. Yes, instead of one minus alpha, instead of one minus alpha, I'll be only writing as one because I can do the neglection because I have assumed alpha value to be less than 0.05. Okay, now guys, on doing the neglection, when I'll be done with the neglection, what I'll be writing at that time, I'll be writing Ki must be equal. Instead of C1 plus C alpha, it's going to be simply C1 multiplied by C1 multiplied by this alpha divided by. Instead of one minus alpha, nothing. Instead of one minus alpha, nothing. Yes. Yes. Let me know in the chat box if it's clear to you. Let me know in the chat box if it's clear to you. Let me know fast, let me know fast. Very, very simple thing, guys. Very, very simple thing. Already I have cut the I have cut the CC. This is going to be C1 plus C alpha multiplied by alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. Okay. Now I have done the neglection. Instead of C1 plus C alpha, I'm only writing C1. Correct. Instead of 1 minus alpha, I'm only writing 1. Okay. So what I'll be getting right here, Ki is equal to C1 multiplied by alpha. Ki is equal to this C1. This I have neglected, multiplied by alpha. So people, can I say alpha is equal to Ki divided by C1? Yes, this is something which I want you guys to remember. This will be the degree of ionization of the weak electrolyte after the common ion effect. Yes, 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 yes. Saurabh, I think you are new to the channel, is that? Okay. People, is it clear to everyone? Now, 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 let me show you how this concept is used in the questions and how questions are to be solved by using the common ion effect, yeah? Okay, see guys. I'm moving on directly to the first question and people see how this question is to be solved. See how this question is to be solved. It is not a single question. These are basically two questions. These are basically two questions, okay? And let me show you how these questions are to be solved and the rest of the questions I'm going to give you the homework, okay? Let me show you how this question is solved first of all, okay? First of all, calculate the concentration of each species at equilibrium in an aqueous solution containing 0.1 molar NH4OH only. So first of all, in the first part, I'm given with only NH4OH, which is a weak base, which is a weak base. So in the container, I've got only NH4OH. NH4OH, as you all must be knowing now, it's a weak base. If it is a weak base, it will be in equilibrium with its ions and its ions are going to be NH4 positive aqueous plus what? Plus OH negative aqueous. Yes. This is something which we have. Now people, what is the concentration of NH4OH which is given to me? That is 0.1. That is 0.1, okay, right? So at t time t is equal to zero, the concentration of NH4OH I'm representing by C and C value already you know that is 0.1. Okay, let's assume the degree of ionization is alpha for this weak electrolyte. So initially, it's going to be zero. It is going to be zero. Yes. Now, people, at so after some time, there'll be equilibrium in the reaction as we all must be knowing. Yes. So people, it is going to be C minus C alpha. It is going to be C alpha. It's going to be C alpha. Okay. Yes. So I got the concentration. I got the concentration of each reactant and product right here at equilibrium. Yes. Okay, now people, can I write the value of Kb? Can I write the expression for Kb? What is Kb? Kb is what we call as dissociation constant of this weak base. Yes, I can write its expression. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now people, Kb is going to be equal. Concentration of NH4 positive at equilibrium. Yes, raised power stoichiometry coefficient multiplied by concentration of OH negative at equilibrium raised power stoichiometry coefficient divided by concentration of NH4OH. Yes, this is something how I'll be writing the KB expression here. Yeah? Now guys, yes, yes, it's sufficient. It's sufficient. Whatever I'll be teaching here, it's sufficient. Apart from that, I'll be telling you what all things you have to follow. Okay, just wait for it. All right, guys. So now have a look. What is the concentration of NH4 positive at equilibrium? It is C alpha. 
multiplied by. What is the concentration of OH negative at equilibrium? It's again C alpha divided by. What is the concentration of NH4OH? It is C minus C alpha. So I can take C common. It's going to be 1 minus alpha. Yes. Can I say 1C and 1C got cancelled? Can I say KB value is going to be equal to C alpha square divided by 1 minus alpha? Right? I got the expression for KB. Okay. Now guys, now one important thing arises. Should I be neglecting alpha right here or not? Should I be neglecting alpha right here or not? And I have told you in the last session how to check whether alpha is to be neglected or not. Okay. For that, for that, I will directly assume, I'll directly assume, let the alpha value to be far less than 1. Let alpha value to be less than 0 0.05. Yes, if alpha value will be, I'm assuming it, I'm assuming it, okay? I'm assuming alpha value to be far less than 1. I'm assuming alpha value to be less than 0 0.05. So people, if alpha value will be less than 0 0.05, then instead of 1 minus alpha, can I only write 1? Yes, I can do that. Now people, I can write KB is equal to C alpha square. Directly, I can do that. Yes, I can write KB is equal to C alpha square or I can write alpha is equal to under root of KB divided by C. Yes, so alpha will be equal to under root of. The KB value for this NH4OH is given to me as 1.8 into 10 to the power what? Into 10 to the power minus 5 divided by C, where C is the concentration of NH4OH, which is 0 0.1. So it's going to be 10 power minus 1. So alpha value you are going to get under root of 1.8. Remember, it is 1.34 multiplied by. This is going to be 10 power 1. A 10 power minus 1 will go up. So it's going to become root of 10 power minus 4, which is going to be 10 power minus 2. So people, are you getting alpha value actually to be less than 0 0.05? Yes, you are getting the alpha value actually less than as 0 0.05. Okay. So whatever neglection we have done right here, it is absolutely correct. It's absolutely correct. Yes. If alpha value was not coming as less than 0 0.05, that means whatever neglection we had done in the beginning, that was wrong. But right here, alpha value is actually coming as less than 0 0.05. So whatever neglection I've done, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. Now people, I got the value of alpha. I got the value of alpha. What am I supposed to calculate? The concentration of each species at equilibrium. That means, that means I am going to calculate now the concentration of NH4OH, the concentration of NH4 positive, the concentration of OH negative at equilibrium. This is something which we have to calculate. Yes. So people, I'm going to calculate first of all the concentration of NH4 positive at equilibrium, which is what I'm supposed to calculate. And concentration of NH4 positive at equilibrium is simply C alpha. What is the value of C? Value of C is not nothing it is 0 0.1 and alpha value we got to know that is 1.34 into 10 to the power minus 2 so this value you'll be getting as 1.34 into 10 to the power minus 3 this is going to be the concentration of nh4 positive at equilibrium and you can write its units as well it's going to be moles per liter because right now we are talking about concentration yeah very simple. Similarly, guys, can you calculate the concentration of OH negative right here at equilibrium? Again, it's going to be C alpha. So its value is going to come same. Yes. Now, what about the concentration of NH4OH at equilibrium? Concentration of NH4OH at equilibrium is going to be C minus C alpha. C value, you know, right? Our, I can take C common. It's going to be 1 minus alpha. C value, you know, alpha value, you know. Can you get the value of uh, NH4OH at equilibrium as well? Can you get the concentration of NH4OH at equilibrium as well? Yes. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Let me know in the chat box if it's clear. Yes. Yes, there are Sankar NCRT exemplar is definitely very, very important for your JEV. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes. Now, guys, there is the second part of question. The second part of question is, is something where we have to use the logic, where you have to think a bit, okay? The second part of the question, guys. The first part was damn easy, right? I had only NH4OH in the container. But, 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 in the second part of the question, we have got 0 0.1 molar NH4Cl along with NH4OH. Yes, yes. So how to do the second part of the question, right? Now, let me show you how to do that. In the second part of the question, we need to operate common ion effect. In the second, in the second, in the second part, in the second part, I will be using the common ion effect, okay? Sort of which formula you're talking about, bro? Let me know. Let me know also. Let me know also which formula you're talking about so that I can use that formula. Okay. See, guys, understand now the second part of the question. See. Now, in the second part of the question, we have got NH4OH. We have got 0 0.1 molar NH4Cl along with NH4OH. Yes. Yes. This is something. This is something which is given to us. Okay. Understand properly what I'm going to say. Okay. 
people first of all let me know in the chat box if everything is clear till here let me know in the chat box if everything is clear till here let me know fast yes yes no that's okay that's not the problem if you have solved singage completely that's enough that's enough if you have solved singage completely all right guys so let's move on to the next part of the equation let's see how this is done okay now people i have got nh4oh in the container yes nh4oh is the weak liquid right so it's going to stay in equilibrium with its ions as you all must be knowing so it's going to be nh4 positive aqueous plus plus oh negative aqueous yes this is something which we have this is something which we have correct now people let's assume at time t is equal to 0 the concentration of this nh4oh is c this is 0 this is 0 let's say degree of ionization is alpha so at equilibrium can i say it's going to be c minus c alpha this is going to be uh, c alpha and this is going to be c alpha i got the concentration of each each species right here at equilibrium yes i got the concentration of each species right here at equilibrium okay now people what is given in the equation now in this nh4oh what am i adding i'm adding 0.1 molar of nh4cl along with nh4oh okay now people right here what am i doing i'm adding nh4cl in the same container nh4cl as you all must be knowing it's a strong liquid right so it will get completely dissociated into its ions and its ions are nh4 positive aqueous plus what plus cl negative aqueous yes Let's assume the concentration of let's assume the concentration of NH4Cl is C1. This is going to be zero. This is going to be zero. Now it is a strong liquid, right? It will get completely dissociated into its ions, so I'll be left with nothing, right? So C1. This is going to be C1. This is going to be C1. Now, people, in the same container, in the same container, do I have a weak electrolyte and the strong electrolyte which contains a common ion in between? This is the common ion. Yes. Yes, so can I say over here common ion effect is going to operate? Okay, and due to the common ion effect, can I say degree of ionization of this weak electrolyte is going to get suppressed? Yeah. Yes, can I say that? Can I say that degree of ionization of this weak electrolyte is going to be is going to get I mean suppressed? Yes. Now, guys, can you tell me what will be the resulting common ion concentration in the container? Can I say resulting common ion concentration is going to be C alpha plus C one? Yes, this C one is the concentration of NH four positive, which is coming from the strong liquid, right? and this C alpha was the concentration of the common ion NH four positive, which is coming from the weak liquid. Right? So the resulting common ion concentration is going to be C alpha plus C one. Okay, yes, yes. Now, guys, now what I'm going to do? Understand that as well. See. Understand properly. Understand properly. This C one, this C one is the concentration of what strong electrolyte, right? And the concentration of strong electrolyte is given to me as zero point one. This is the value of C one. This is the value of C one. Correct. Now, people, understand one thing. If I write the K B expression for this weak electrolyte now, if I write a uh, dissociation constant of this weak base right here now, if I write its expression, how it's going to look like? It's going to look look uh, look like this. Concentration of NH four positive at equilibrium raised to the power stoichiometric coefficient multiplied by concentration of OH negative at equilibrium raised to the power stoichiometric coefficient divided by concentration of NH four OH over here. Yes. Okay. Now, guys, understand. So KB, I'll be writing like this. KB, I'll be writing like this. Concentration of NH4 positive at equilibrium. That's going to be C alpha plus C1. Yes. Or I'll be writing C1 plus C alpha. Correct. Multiplied by concentration of OH negative. It's simply going to be C alpha divided by concentration of NH4 OH. It is going to be C multiplied by one minus alpha. Yes. Can I see C and this C got cancelled? Okay. So people, what I'm getting right here, I got something like this. I got something like this. I got KB to be equal. I got KB to be equal C1 plus C alpha multiplied by what? Multiplied by alpha. Okay. Divided by divided by one minus alpha. This is something which I got right here. Now guys, now now. now now should i be neglecting alpha right here or not should i be neglecting alpha right here or not how do i get to know that how do i get to know that first of all degree of dissociation degree of ionization of this weak electrolyte -like would have got suppressed on adding the strong electrolyte -like having the common ion into it okay now guys can i do one thing if i'll assume alpha value to be less than 0.05 i'll assume i'll let the alpha value to be less than 0.05 let the alpha value to be far less than 1 what i'll be doing at that time i'll be assuming if if alpha value is far 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 less than 1 what i'll be doing i can neglect alpha wherever i want to do that yes yes now guys 
what I'll be writing instead of C1 plus C alpha, I'll be only writing C1, okay? Instead of one minus alpha, I'll be only writing one. So what is going to be the net expression which I'm going to get right here? So KB value, I got something like this. KB is equal to instead of C1 plus C alpha, I'm going to write only C1 multiplied by, this is the alpha over here, divided by, divided by what? Divide by nothing, divide by nothing, yes, yes. Now guys, alpha is going to be KB divided by C1, yes? What is the value of KB which we have guys? The value of KB is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 divided by C1 is the concentration of strong electrolyte which we had, that is 10 power minus 1. So alpha value is coming as 1.8 into 10 power minus 4. Now people, can you actually check if alpha value is coming out to be less than 0.05? Actually alpha value came out to be less than 0.05. So whatever neglection we have done, that's absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct, yes. Yes, Manish, you can take the video a little back. It'll be automatically a replay, okay? You can take the video a little back, bro. Huh. Right? Right? So people, you got the alpha value actually as far, far less than one. Actually, you got it as less than 0.05. So what we can do, whatever neglection we have done right here, that's absolutely correct. Now people, if you got the alpha value, we can easily calculate the concentration of everything right here. We are supposed to calculate the concentration of each species at equilibrium. Yes, we got the alpha value. We got the alpha value. And we know the concentration of each species right here. Just understand, just understand. Concentration of NH4OH at equilibrium is C minus C alpha. Yes, C is the concentration of weak electrolyte, which is 0.1. Okay, alpha value you got to know, correct? You have the value of C, C is the concentration of weak electrolyte. Alpha value you have, alpha value you have, how much is that? Alpha value you got is 1.8 into 10 power minus 4. Everything how you have, you are going to get everything. You are going to get the concentration of every species right here at equilibrium, yes? Let me know in the chat box, guys, if it's clear to you. Let me know in the chat box if it's clear to you fast, yes? Let me know in the chat box if it's clear to everyone. Jay, you can take the video a little back, bro. You can take the video a little back. Okay, got it. Should I be moving on to the next question, guys? All right. Let's move on, let's move on, and let's do, let's do the next question. Let's try to do the next question, okay? Okay, this is the question which we have, guys. Now you can easily solve this question. You can easily solve this question, guys. See, calculate the concentration of H positive and CH3CO negative at equilibrium. If 0.5 molar HCl is added in an aqueous solution containing 0.1 molar CH3COOH. That means in the same container, I have got the strong electrolyte as well as the weak electrolyte. Yeah. What is my weak electrolyte right here? My weak electrolyte is CH3COH. Yes. This is the weak electrolyte which I have. Now people, this is a weak acid basically and all your weak acids are weak electrolytes. So people, can I say this weak electrolyte, it's going to remain in equilibrium with its ions and its ions are going to be CH3CO negative aqueous plus what? Plus H positive aqueous, yes. Yes. People, am I given with the concentration of CH3COH? Okay. Yes, I'm given with the concentration of CH3COH, which is 0.1 molar. Okay. So at time t is equal to 0, the concentration of CH3COH is C. This is going to be 0. This is going to be 0. Let's assume the degree of ionization is alpha. So at equilibrium, can you tell me how much I'll be left with? I'll be left with C minus C alpha right here. I'll be, I'll be having C alpha concentration of CH3CO negative at equilibrium. And this is going to be C alpha at equilibrium. Yes. Now, now, now. What am I going to do? I am going to drop a strong electrolyte HCl into the same container in which I have got this weak electrolyte. Yes. Now, people, I have dropped HCl, which is the strong acid, which is the strong acid in the same container in which I have got this CH3COH. Okay. So it will get completely dissociated into its ions and its ions are H positive plus what? H positive plus Cl negative right here. Correct. So people, am I given with the concentration of HCl? Absolutely. I'm representing this concentration by C1. Okay, so at time t is equal to 0, I'll be having the concentration of HCl as C1. This was 0, this was 0. Now it's a strong electrolyte, it will get completely converted into its ions. So I'll be left with nothing right here. The concentration of H positive right here is going to be C1. The concentration of Cl negative right here is going to be C1. Yes, yes. Roshni alpha is degree of ionization. I think you have, this is your first session, yeah? You go through the last session in which I have talked about all the basic terminologies in detail, okay? Now guys, see. 
Now guys, see, can I say in the same container, I have got the weak electrolyte and the strong electrolyte, which have got common ion in between. And what is the common ion? Common ion is going to be H positive right here. Common ion is going to be H positive right here. People, can you tell me, can you tell me what will be the resulting H positive concentration? Can I say resulting H positive concentration is going to be C alpha plus C1, right? This C1 is the H positive concentration which is coming from strong electrolyte and C alpha is going to be the H positive concentration which is coming from this weak electrolyte right here. Yes. Yes. Now guys, understand one important thing right here. Should I be neglecting alpha right here or not? Should I be neglecting alpha right here or not? People, let's forget everything. Let's forget everything. Let's assume I had only this weak electrolyte in the container. Let's assume I had only weak electrolyte in the container. If I had only weak electrolyte in the container, should I have calculated its alpha like this under root of Ka divided by C? I should have calculated alpha like this if I had only weak electrolyte right here. Okay, so people, alpha value right here would have been something like this under root of K. K is something as 1.8 into 10 power minus 5 divided by C. C is the concentration of this CH3COH which is 0 0.1. So it's 10 power minus 1. So it's going to be 1.34 into 10 power minus 2. Right? So this was the value of alpha when in the container you had only, when in the container you had only the weak acid present. Okay? Now people, when I have dropped the strong electrolyte into it and both having the common ions, can I say this alpha value would have got further reduced? It was already less than 0.05. Now on adding the strong electrolyte, on adding the strong acid H, uh, HCl, what would have happened? I would say, I would say alpha value would have got further reduced. Yes. So people, very simple. So can I say, I can do the neglection wherever I want because I got to know alpha value is already less than 0.05. Yes. Yes. Yes, Sakshi so is a strong electrolyte. Right? It will get completely dissociated into its ions. That's why I'll be left. With, I'll be left with nothing of this HCl right here. It will get completely dissociated into its ions. Yeah. Now, people, I got to know. I can do the neglection right here. I can do the neglection right here. Okay. Now, guys, the same procedure I'm going to follow over here, which I have been following in the last questions as well. Right? Can I write the can I write the Ka expression? Can I write the Ka expression? What is going to be my Ka expression right here? Ka is going to be simply dissociation constant of this weak acid. It's going to be concentration of CH3, CO negative, multiplied by concentration of H positive at equilibrium, divided by concentration of CH3, COOH. Yes, this is something which I'll be writing right here. Now, people, what is the concentration of CH3CO negative? Can I say it's going to be C alpha? What is the concentration of H positive right here? It's going to be C1 plus C alpha, okay, divided by. What is the concentration of CH3COH at equilibrium? It is C minus C alpha. I'm taking C common. It's going to be 1 minus alpha. Can I say 1C and 1C got cancelled? So, people, I got the Ka value right here for this weak electrolyte after the common ion effect as C1 plus C alpha multiplied by what? Multiplied by alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. And already we have discussed, already we have checked guys, already we have checked, we can do the neglection, we can neglect alpha because alpha value was coming out to be less than 0 0.05, yes, yes, so people, I can simply, I can simply neglect alpha, so instead of C1 plus C alpha, I can simply write C1 and instead of 1 minus alpha, I can simply write 1, okay, this is something which I got right here, now, now, now. Now, 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 I can simply write Ka to be equal. Instead of C1 plus C alpha, I can write C1. So this is going to be C1 multiplied by alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. Instead of 1 minus alpha, alpha, I just have to write 1. So people, can I get the actual alpha value right here? Absolutely. It's going to be, sorry, it's not root of. It's going to be what? It's going to be Ka divided by C1. Where C1 is the concentration of what? C1 is the concentration of strong electrolyte right here. So people, alpha value, the actual alpha value we got to know as Ka, which is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5, divided by C1. C1 value, we know that is how much? C1 value is 0 0.5, that means 5 into 10 power minus 1. Yes. So people, can we get the alpha value from here? Yes. Can we get the alpha value from here? Absolutely. I'll be getting alpha value from here. Okay. I'll be getting alpha value from here. So people, if you get the alpha value from here, what were we supposed to calculate in the equation? We were supposed to calculate the concentration of... <coughs> Sorry. 
we were supposed to calculate the concentration of H positive and CH3CO negative. H positive concentration is simple since we have neglected alpha. So instead of C1 plus C alpha, we are going to write C1. So H positive concentration is simply going to be 0 0.5. But, cons but CH3CO negative concentration is going to be equal to C alpha. C value we know, alpha value we know, C value we know. Yes, this is the C value, alpha value we got. So I can get the concentration of CH3CO negative as well. Let me know in the chat box if it's clear to everyone. Yes. Let me know in the chat box fast if it's clear to everyone. Yes. Yes, guys, is it clear? Is it clear? Let me know in the chat box so that I can move on. Manish, I can do nothing, bro. You just go through the last session then. Just check the last session first. Watch the first session, then come to this session. Because I think you have missed the last session where I talked about the basic terminologies. Yes. Yes. Kashyap 0.1. 0 0.1 is the concentration of what? 0 0.1 is the concentration of this weak liquid. Yeah, what's wrong in it? See, I was supposed to calculate H positive concentration and CH3CO negative concentration. H positive concentration is C1 plus C alpha. But instead of C1 plus C alpha, I can only write C1. So whatever is going to be the H positive concentration, that is going to be equal to C1. And C1 value you already have. C1 value is 0 0.5. So simply H positive concentration is 0 0.5. Yes. Now concentration of this CH3CO negative, it's equal to C alpha. Okay. C value, you know that is 0 0.1. Alpha value, you got from here. You just have to multiply these two. You will get the concentration. Yeah. Very, very, very simple it was. Okay. Now people... Now people, this is the question which you guys are going to do and you guys are going to let me know the answer in the comment box afterwards when the session ends, okay? You can take the screenshot first. You can take the screenshot first. I can move, and then I can move on to the next topic. Just take the screenshot of this question and I want the answers from all the guys whosoever is watching the lecture right now. I want the answers in the comment box afterwards, right? Okay, I am moving on. I am moving on and talking about something called as Oswald's dilution law. Oswald's dilution law. This is again very very important concept guys. Oswald's dilution law. What is this Oswald's dilution law all about? Understand properly what I'm going to say. As per Oswald's dilution law guys, the degree of ionization of a weak electrolyte increases with the dilution. Okay, as per Oswald's dilution law, the degree of ionization of a weak electrolyte increases with dilution. What does that mean? What does that mean? Understand. Let's say at time t is equal to 0, the concentration of this weak electrolyte is C. This was 0. This was 0. Let's say degree of ionization is alpha. Yes. So people at equilibrium, can I say I'll be left with C minus C alpha. This is going to be C alpha. This is going to be C alpha. Yes. So can I write the ionization constant expression for this weak electrolyte right here? Absolutely, we can do that. Concentration of A positive at equilibrium, which is C alpha, multiplied by concentration of B negative at equilibrium, which is again C alpha, divided by concentration of AB at equilibrium which is c minus c alpha i'll take c as common it's going to be one minus alpha c and c got cancelled so ki value i got as c alpha square divided by one minus alpha this is something which i got right here i got the value of ki i got the value of ki yes i got the value of ki now people understand since it's a weak electrolyte since it's a weak electrolyte and i am assuming alpha value to be far far less than one Okay, I'm assuming alpha value to be less than 0.05. If alpha value will be less than 0.05, I can neglect alpha. Instead of 1 minus alpha, I can only write 1. Yes, I can do that. I can do that. Absolutely. Now, people, can I say Ki is simply going to be equal to C alpha square? Yes. So, or I can say alpha is equal to under root of Ki divided by C. Alpha is equal to under root of Ki divided by C. Okay. Now, people, what do I have to check actually? Okay. See, now we are going to talk about Oswald's dilution law. First of all, what is C, guys? C represents concentration, which is simply number of moles divided by volume. Yes, all of you must be knowing this now. C is nothing, it is just the concentration, which is number of moles divided by volume. Now, people, this reaction is basically, this electrolyte right here is present in a container, basically, right? Now, people, I'm doing the, if I'm doing the dilution, if I'm, do, if I'm adding solvent into it, and solvent in general, I'll be using water. If I'm adding water into it, what is going to happen to the volume of the system? Can I say volume of the system will be increasing? Yes. On adding some water, volume will increase? Yes. If volume increases, can I say concentration will decrease? Yes. Now, people, if concentration decreases, can I say alpha value will increase? So what is happening? What is happening? With the dilution, volume of the system is increasing, concentration is decreasing, and if concentration is decreasing, alpha value is increasing. What is alpha? Degree of ionization. So can I say with the dilution, alpha value increases? 
with dilution alpha value increases so i can say guys i can say with the dilution as per oswald's dilution law with the dilution alpha value increases degree of ionization increases and if the degree of ionization increases i would say more number of ions will enter into the solution yes very 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 simple this is all about your oswald's dilution law as per its statement the degree of ionization of a weak electrolyte increases with dilution which we actually saw right here yes yes uh, Shreyan C is concentration, bro. I think this is your first session. Is that? Is that? Okay, so I'm sure, guys, you are clear with the fact with the dilution, alpha value increases, degree of ionization increases. Yes. Now, guys, let's talk about something. See, at infinite dilution, the weak electrolyte behaves as the strong electrolyte. What does that mean? What does that mean? See. What we got to know with dilution alpha value increases, right? With dilution, let me write it. With dilution, with dilution alpha value increases, yes. And if alpha value increases, I'll say degree of ionization increase, I'll say more number of ions will be getting generated in the container in which I'll be having this weak click, right? Yes. Yes, Jagdish, I know you, I know you absolutely. Now, guys, understand. Now, guys, understand. Say. If I'll try to do dilution continuously, if I'll continuously add water into it, if I'll add continuously water in the container in which this, this weak electrolyte is present, what is going to happen? With dilution, degree of ionization will increase, degree of ionization will increase, right? More number of ions will be going into the container. Yes. Now, people, if I'll add infinite amount of water, that's what we call as infinite dilution. If I'll make the volume of system as infinity with the dilution, can I say at that time, at that time, alpha will have the maximum value? Yes. What is the maximum value of alpha? Maximum value of alpha will be 1. So can I say at infinite dilution, can I say at infinite dilution, at infinite dilution, alpha value for the weak electrolyte, it becomes 1, it becomes 1. But we know alpha is equal to 1 for strong electrolytes. So I can generalize a statement, I can generalize a statement, your weak electrolytes, they behave as the strong electrolytes at infinite dilution. Yes. Can I say that? Can I say that? Yes. Exactly, Kirito. What you are thinking is absolutely right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Jagdish, I have no idea about that, bro. Yes? Mrinme is saying, what is alpha? Alpha is what we call as degree of ionization. Bro, you watch the first session of this ionic, ionic equilibrium, then only you'll get to know, okay? What is this alpha and all? I think this is the first time you're entering into the session, yeah? All right, I think this is clear to everyone, yes? Now people, there is something else which we need to discuss right here. That's what we call as ionic product of water. This is again very important and I'll be using this concept of ionic product of water in almost the whole chapter, okay? In almost your whole chapter, I'll be using this concept of ionic product of water, okay? Now what it is all about, what it is all about, let's get to know it, let's get to know all about it. Let me tell you guys, your pure water, it's considered as the weak electrolyte. It is considered as the weak electrolyte, okay? If water is your weak electrolyte, it is going to remain in equilibrium with its ions. It is going to remain in equilibrium with its ions, yes? Now people, if I want to write, if I want to write ionization constant of this water right here, it is going to be concentration of H positive at equilibrium multiplied by concentration of OH negative divided by concentration of H2O. Yes, divided by concentration of H2O liquid. Yes. Now, people, let me tell you the concentration of H2O liquid experimentally it is found out to be 55.5 molar. Experimentally, it's found out to be 55.5 molar. Okay. Now, people, if I'm going to simply multiply the ionization constant of water with the concentration of water, with the concentration of water, which is a constant whose value is 55.5, I'll be getting it as concentration of H positive multiplied by concentration of OH negative. See, guys, ionization constant, this is the constant, this is the constant. Multiplication of two constants is again a constant. Yes, which is what we call as KW, where KW is is what we call as ionic product of water. Kw is what we call as ionic product. I mean, Kw is what we call as ionization constant of this water, right? Kw. This is going to be simply concentration of H positive multiplied by concentration of OH negative. Yes. So I got the value of Kw right here. And what is this Kw? Kw is nothing. It is just the product of these two constants. Yes, ionic product of water, Kw is nothing. H positive concentration multiplied by OH negative concentration. This is something which I got right here. 
Now guys, understand one more thing. I got something like this, I got something like this. Till now I got something like this. I got Kw, which is the ionic product of water. It is equal to concentration of H positive multiplied by concentration of OH negative. Let me tell you guys, this relation is valid at all the temperatures. This relation is valid at all temperatures. This relation is valid at all temperatures. Now people understand one important thing. In pure water, in pure water, at 25 degrees centigrade, at 25 degrees centigrade, experimentally it has been found out that concentration of H positive will be equal to concentration of OH negative, both will be equal to 10 power minus 7 molar at 25 degrees centigrade in pure water. Yes, yes, yes. Now guys, I can simply write Kw, Kw is equal to concentration of H positive multiplied by concentration of OH negative, which is going to be equal to concentration of H positive in pure water at 25 degrees centigrade is 10 power minus 7, this 10 power minus 7, can I say it becomes 10 power minus 14, but this is only valid at 25 degrees centigrade, yes, this is only valid at 25 degrees centigrade, okay. Now guys, understand one more thing. Have you heard about something called as pH? Have you heard about something called as pH? Yes, pH is nothing. P stands for minus log. P stands for minus log. It's a mathematical operator which represents your minus log. And over here, I'm writing H positive concentration. Similarly, if I write POH, POH, P stands for minus log. And then I'll be writing OH negative concentration. If I write something like this, PKW, P stands for minus log. And KW, I'm writing as such. If I'm writing P of KA, the P stands for minus log. And then I'm writing KA. So your P is nothing. It's the mathematical operator which stands for minus log. Yes, yes. Now guys, if I'll multiply this equation throughout by minus log, if I'll multiply this equation throughout by minus log, can I get minus log of Kw will be equal to minus log of minus log of H positive concentration, H positive concentration multiplied by OH negative concentration. Yes, which is going to be equal to minus log of 10 to the power minus 14. Yes, very simple. Correct. Now guys, minus log of Kw. Minus log is what we call as P. So P of Kw, I got something like this. I got something like this. I'll be writing it like this. Minus log of H positive concentration plus plus minus log of OH negative concentration. I just use the property of log right here. Log of M into N, right? Which is going to be equal to minus log instead of minus log. What I'll be writing? I'll be writing. I'll be writing what? Or let me write it like this. Minus log of 10 power minus 14. Uh, m to the power n. Log of m to the power n is n log m. Yes, so it's going to be 14 simply. Yes. So can I say I got a simple relation like this. PKW is equal to minus log of H positive is what we call as pH plus minus log of OH negative is what we call as POH, which is always equal to 14 at 25 degrees centigrade. This is something which you might be remembering till now. Now you got to know how this relation actually comes. And this is only valid at 25 degrees centigrade, right? This is only valid at 25 degrees centigrade, right? PKW is equal to pH plus POH is equal to 14, right? Yes. Is it clear? Hi, Vishnu. Is it clear? Let me know, let me know, let me know in the chat box fast if it is clear. Yes, there, Sankar. Yes, you're absolutely right. Row H square brackets represents concentration. Yeah. Wonderful, guys. Great. So remember this relation. It's very, very, very important. Okay. Remember, guys, one more thing. This Kw, which is called as ionic product of water. Kw depends on temperature. It depends on. It depends on temperature. Okay. If you increase the temperature, remember the value of Kw also increases. If you increase the temperature, the value of Kw also increases. Remember that as well, okay? If we increase the temperature, the value of Kw also increases. I want you guys to take a note of this statement as well. On increasing the temperature, the ionic product of water increases, right? Yes. Now guys, I hope this is clear to everyone. I hope this is clear to everyone, right? This is something which we discussed. Kw is equal to H positive concentration, OH negative concentration, valid at all temperatures. Then we got Kw is equal to concentration of H positive, concentration of OH negative, which is 10 power minus 14. It's valid at 25 degrees centigrade. Yes. Why not, Vishnu, you can do that. Why not? This is something which I told you. Kw depends on temperature and increases with the increase in temperature. Yes. And at 25 degrees centigrade, Kw is this much. 
and PKW is equal to pH plus pOH is equal to 14. This is something which I want you guys to remember till now. Okay, so people, this was all from my side in the today's session. I hope everything got clear to you. And the question which I gave you as the homework, I want everyone to do it. I want everyone to do it, okay? And let me know the answer in the comment box afterwards, okay? So this was all from my side. Tomorrow, I'll see you guys again at the same time. And tomorrow, we are going to talk about the pH of the strong acids, strong bases, weak acids, weak bases. When we mix two weak bases, what is going to be the pH? When we mix a strong acid and the weak acid, what is going to happen to the pH? Yes, everything we are going to get this, we are going to discuss in the tomorrow session. So people, till then, you guys take care. Bye-bye. God bless you all. Love you all. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care.